Ampeti washte, Gracie Horn imachi apie, Sisi tuanwa kbetuan oyate, Naku hunkpapa oyate, mitioshbe. Hello, my name is Gracie Horn, and my people are the Sistan Wapta Nation based out of South Dakota and the Standing Rock Nation based out of North Dakota. I am here today to show you how to make Shunkawaka puppet marionettes. Joining us today is my almost two year old daughter, Heisapawi. Her name is spelt H-E-S-A-P-A-W-I-N, and that means Black Hills Woman. So she'll be in and out of the video, kind of adding her own flair to this demonstration. So the reason why I chose to demonstrate how to make a Shinko Wakam puppet is because I have loved horses <laughs> my whole life. Horses have been a very big part of my people historically and has and my family all has their own horses the horses came to north america in the late 1400s by the conquistadors also known as the spanish colonizers we did used to have a small form of a horse which is like the size of a dog horses helped my people move camp and it made life on living on the plains or in the woods a lot easier I chose to do a, a horse marionette because I have my own horse. His name is Red Fox. He is very special to me and I've had him for at least 15 years now. Right now he is retired and he's living the good life up in northern Minnesota. Every time I try to make new pieces of artwork, I like to try to incorporate the profile of my horse. I think they are beautiful and majestic animals. So I engineered how to make my own puppet marionette using the horse body. It took a while and with this demonstration we'll be using three different toilet paper rolls to make our own puppet marionette. A marionette is much like the puppets that you see in the Disney movie Pinocchio. This puppet that I will be showing you today is going to be puppeted by two strings only. You'll see other puppets that have more than two strings and they'll be able to do more cool things. With this one, you'll be able to make the puppet gallop or trot or just walk all over places. And all you will need is your own imagination a little bit of engineering to figure out how to turn animals into marionette puppets. This animal is still deemed as being sacred. It is used for prayer walks and rides as a symbol of the endurance and survivance of the Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota people. Just like the dog and other sacred animals, you can see it depicted in our art and our culture. Before we begin this activity, some of the supplies that you will need that you will find all throughout your house is a pair of scissors, scotch tape, string, a stick of some sort that could be a chopstick, a straw, or even a branch from outside. Just make sure that it's at least six inches. You will also need a pencil or a marker, a marker of any sort, and three toilet paper rolls as well as paint if you want to paint your horse. That can be temper paint or acrylic paint. And for that, you'll need a paintbrush and a cup for water. Let's begin our Shunkawaka puppet marionette session. We will start off with our three toilet paper rolls. We'll take the first one. And what you're doing with the toilet paper rolls is you are squishing them in half so that it creates a double. And this first toilet paper roll is we're making the head and the neck. 
And how you'll do that is by, flip it this way, that's good. By taking your marker, and like I said, if you have the printable template, you can just cut out the template and then place it on top. And it will have this first shape. And you're gonna go over it. And there you go. Now, if you don't have the template, all you have to do is kind of eyeball it. So here's the neck. Here's the neck, and here is the snout and the head. There we go. You're gonna cut this out. And remember to keep this. You, you need the rest of the toilet paper roll. Do not throw away any of the parts. So I'm going to get my scissors. There. And when you unfold it, it should look like this. That's a good sign. It kind of looks like a teepee almost. And so there's the neck and there's the snout. And if you don't want your marker to show on the outside, all you have to do is roll it opposite. Paper, since toilet paper rolls are made out of paper, um, all you have to do is roll it so it flips so then all of the marker is on the inside so it's hidden okay the next part is like the face so that's where we're going to use this big strip and pretty much you are going to cut from here to here just take your marker and go from here to here And that template should match up with the one that I have before. It looks like this. This one though has a little bit of a rounded snout. You can do that too. All you have to do is just cut that. So we're gonna cut this in half. There we go. And if I want the rounded snout, all I have to do is do that. There we go. And like before, I don't want the markers, the markings to be on the outside. So I'm going to manipulate it by flipping it, making it go the inside. And then we have these cardboard pieces left. And what we need to do is make ears. So we take this, we take that triangle, we're gonna make ears by just cutting triangles. So we have that big triangle, you flip it like this, draw the line or don't, and then cut it. And here's our ears. All you gotta do is fold some tabs like so. That is a tab. Then you fold another tab. There we go. Now all we literally have are these two pieces left so we're just gonna put those aside just in case. And we're going to take our tape What we're going to do with our tape is take the neck first, make sure it goes like this. We're going to take the face and then we're going to join the face and the neck together. I 
I should have cut that into a smaller piece. Oh well. Take another one. Do it again. You'll probably be way per more perfect at taping this than I'm than I am. Then you're gonna take your ears and I'm gonna need smaller pieces like this. Tape that right there. Now I'm going to take the other ear and get a little piece of tape and do that all over on this side. Now we have two ears. If you want to reinforce the, these with just more tape, that's completely fine. It's totally up to you. I'm going to just reinforce that side so the flaps don't come up. And also this ear. If you see some extra bits, just cut them off. There you go. There's your neck and your head. And now we'll attach it to our body. Here's the second toilet paper roll. And just like everybody's body, it's not completely a cylinder. You have to kind of add some ovalness into it. Our little horse oval body. So you kind of squish it just a little bit so it's like an oval. Then you're gonna take your, your head and you're going to attach it to the front part of the body. Okay, we have that added. And then before I forget, because this is a marionette, you will need to cut some holes for the string. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your scissors and you're just gonna do a little diamond at the neck. Take your scissors. There you go, and there's a hole that I can put my string through. Okay, so there's the body part, and next it'll be the legs. Okay, for your last and final toilet paper roll, you are going to take it and squish it again. So you can cut two legs at a time. And I have a template for a front leg and a back leg, or I will show you how to do it without using a template. So the first one, I'm going to go over it with a marker. Then the back leg. Same thing. There. And it's pretty much the same thing on the other side when you're just eyeballing it. This will be the front leg. Make sure you don't forget the hoof. Kind of goes like, it's a little bit, yeah. A little bit thicker. And then the back leg is always thicker too. So, and don't forget the hoof. The back of the hoof. And like I said, it's always a little bit thicker. I'm going to use the template side. You're going to cut them out. And remember, we need the scraps. So try not to get rid of them too fast. OK, 
Okay, so those are the front two legs. Here is the back. There. So now I have a front and a back. Now when you are going to add on your legs, just make sure that you put generous amounts of tape on and then make sure that you don't tape them too close together where the ends of the legs are look like they're hugging each other's hooves. You are going to space them out and kind of bend them as you go just to make sure that they don't go in together. You, again, you can use as much tape as you want for this section. Then you're going to take your scraps like you used before to make a mane. I'm just cutting some strips so it looks like hair. And I'm going to taper off the sides so it tapes very well. Then I'm going to make sure that I have a diamond cut in the back. And to make your hair curl, all you can do is take your fingers and go like this. There. And you have the horse. For this next part, we're going to speed through it. I chose to paint my horse blue. And you are going to apply your paint, whether that be acrylic or tempera paint. And with a with a paintbrush, it does make it easier. You can choose to do one coat of paint or two, whatever is easier for you. If you need to reapply later, just make sure that it's dry first. This part gets really messy, so it's a good idea to paint on top of a paper towel or paper or what have you, or just wipe it up right away because acrylic is easy to wipe up if when it's still wet. Then once you're done, you're going to put it to the side for it to dry. I added yellow dots on the side just to make a little blue and yellow Appaloosa horse. For this next part, you're going to make sure that your horse is dry and you have two holes and you have two strings that are cut equally. You are going to take the first string and lace it through and then tie three knots at the end. You can secure it with a piece of tape to make sure it stays in place. Then you're going to take the second string and rope that through the hole and you're going to put three knots in and then take a tape and put it at the end to make it secure in place. Once you have those through, you're gonna take your control arm. That is your stick. I'm gonna use a straw. So you tie it on one end of the straw or the stick, tie it about two times and then secure it with a piece of tape because it does slip around. And then the second one, you're going to make sure that it is level with the first and you're going to tie it the same time, like have two or three knots at the end make sure that they're that both sides are even and you can adjust it as you go and then you're going to take tape two to keep it in place now it's learning how to control your marionette by using the control arm now if you make your wrist go forward that makes the horse look like it's eating. If you make it go backward, it looks like it's rearing up. 
And then if you just kind of go back and forth with your wrist, it looks like it's galloping or trotting. You can make it eat out of your hand or do other types of tricks. I made a second horse just to make it look like they were both playing with each other. Feel free to make as many horses as you want. Thank you to Eastside Arts Council for sponsoring this workshop and thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for more workshops that I will be offering later on and take pictures of the things that you created today. Maybe you didn't create a horse, maybe you created a unicorn or a, a different type of animal. I love to see what you created. You can post that on Facebook or Instagram, both places I am on. And I hope this inspired you to start your own puppet making career. Or if you want, you can also create your own puppet play. Have a good summer and I'll see you again.